Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about not using these and instead using this. But before we get into that, I got an offer for you. If you're in the United States and you're a ham and you've got a spare HF transceiver around, I'd like to talk to you. I've bought a bunch of transceivers since I got my license off of eBay and they've just all turned out to be crap in one way or another. I'm tired of wasting money on it. So if you've got a transceiver you'd like to get rid of, it doesn't have to be fancy. Just something simple I can get on 40 and 20 meters single sideband with, okay? And that you know works. That doesn't have nothing weird that I've got to figure out or stick my toe into an electrical socket and lick something to make work. Let's talk. Um, let's talk a trade. What I propose is this lovely Siglent oscilloscope along with a Fluke 8840A five and a half digit precision digital bench multimeter. Anyway, my email is arduino0169 at gmail.com if you're interested. All right, on to the good stuff. I'm sure these little guys here look familiar. Let's get in here and have a look at them. I've used them in tons of my sketches. Come on, focus. There we go. The BME 280 and the BMP 280. Not to be confused because... Um, this one does pressure and temperature, and this one, the BME, does pressure, temperature, and humidity. Why do I have two? Well, because I didn't know that, and I bought this one first, and I wanted this one. Anyway, these are great little Arduino sensors. You stick them in your projects, and they work fine. What they are not are industrial components. They're not going to survive harsh environments. And, you know, frankly, most of your Arduino stuff isn't. So that's why we want to talk about this. This is your basic K-type threaded industrial thermocouple. You know, it's got a stainless steel jacket. You can put this inside of most any project, and it's going to last forever. But to make it work, we need an amplifier and a library. And that's what we're going to talk about today. As you can see here, when I zoom out, I've cooked up a little project for us using this right here. What's this you say? Let me show you. So you're looking at the micro through the microscope there at this little surface mount guy on top here. I know it's kind of hard to see the lettering, but it's a Max 6675. And let's get out of here. Max 6675 is an awesome little uh, thermocouple amplifier chip. So you hook up your thermocouple to it, it's even marked negative and positive. And you've got your pins here um, ground, VCC, S clock, CS, and SO. So ground and VCC, obvious uh, clock is your S clock, CS is your chip select, and SO is your data out. They'll correspond to a couple of things that we got whoops <laughs> uh oh almost lost it they will correspond to some settings that we have in the program so they hook up simply other than your ground in vcc to three pins i'm using uh 13 12 and 10. then we have our oled which is i squared c so it's going over here and hooking up to uh, A4 and A5. This is a really simple setup. And the best part is this library that I found by Ryan McLaughlin allows you to use this thermocouple and specify whether you want the raw output, a Celsius output, or a Fahrenheit output with one line of code. Let's go check it out. All right, let's look at the code here. I mean, it's really simple. Max 6675 thermocouple amplifier with OLED demo written by me blah 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 and I use the library by Ryan McLaughlin there is a link to it here in the code and there is a link to it in the description below 
So we're going to have three includes. We're going to need the library for the Mac 6675 chip, our I squared C library, and the library for our OLED. One define, one declaration, and then we're going to initialize our Mac 6675 with um, this is S clock. This is uh, data out, and what's the third one? Well, we can just look at the chip and see. I forget what it is. Here's the important one. This last one, if it is zero, it will give you the direct reading. It's 12-bit. If it's one, it'll give you a reading in Celsius. If it's two, it'll give you a reading in Fahrenheit. So remember that. Then we're going to initialize our SSD, which is the OLED. Then down here in setup, I always have a 9600 baud serial for my debugging when stuff doesn't work. It's just easier to look at the console. Then we're going to begin our display. And it is at address OX3C. We're using the Adafruit library here. Um, it's looking for the device at OX3D. A lot of the cheap Chinese ones are at OX3C. So if you plug yours in, nothing happens. Try adding this, a comma, and that little bit to the end there. That'll usually fix the problem. Next, display. Display the Adafruit logo. Enjoy it. And then it goes away. I don't mind putting the Adafruit logo on there. Uh, Lady Ada does an incredible amount of work for the maker community and charges nothing. All right, next. Here, here's the magic. One line of code is all you need to bring this thermocouple into any of your sketches. Temperature, which is the variable that we declared up here, equals temp dot read dot temp parentheses. That gets you your uh, thermocouple reading. Then we just do some display setup, and then we display it. It's that simple. That's probably this is probably the simplest sketch I've ever done. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, so we're ready for our testing. I have our testing supplies here, including a glass of icy cold ice water, followed by flame. Let's uh, plug it in here pretty warm so this might read yeah up around 90 degrees Fahrenheit there is no flicker to my eye that's simply a function of the camera all right ladies and gentlemen I present to you ice water and something bad happened it reset I wonder what caused that Is that strange or what? Might be the power bank I'm using. Because there shouldn't be any problem with immersing that. What the? Yeah, I think the power bank's going out. This might not have enough, might not be pulling enough current to keep this active. But as you can see, our temperature is going down. And, you know, and the power bank keeps going off. You know what? Maybe because that's because I have it in the quick charge three bank. Let's put it in the other one and see if that makes a difference. Come on. Temperature go down. Doesn't seem to want to go down anymore. Whoa, 52. Interesting. I'm not a temperature guy. I, fig I figured it should be in the 40s. But what do I know? I know that this should make it warmer. How about some flame? You like flame? Flame for your little thermocouple? I must sacrifice you to the flame gods. Yes. Damn it. Turn on power bank. Power bank. 
power bank. There we go. Ah, now the heat. It is a climbing. But if you try to do this with a BMP 280 or a BME 280 for that matter, well, let's just say it wouldn't survive. So what's the benefit of this? Well, the benefit of this is you get to stick the robust industrial part of it into whatever project you want, run the lovely braided uh, stainless steel line out, and you're good to go. Your delicate electronicals stay safe and uh, secure while your industrial bits do their industrial bittiness. So anyway, that's about it for that. I mean, it's super simple. What more can I say? But I figured you guys might not know about the 6675. And you know what they used to say on NBC, right? The more you know, whatever. Not like I went to Juilliard. Okay. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Big thanks to the patrons who helped me buy that. Big thanks to you for watching. Don't forget, if you're a ham, want to do a little ham trading, I got some stuff. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Uh -huh.